Hey guys, welcome to my little classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and I hope you have already gone through my consolidated video of 3 minutes with single slide on sources of law. If you have not gone through that, please go through that so that you have concept in right place. In this presentation, I am going to discuss precedent as a source of law completely and two other presentations are available in my playlist that is on legislation as source of law and customs as source of law. With that, I am getting into first slide. What do you think? Do you think the legislations or customs available in a particular nation will have answer for all law related questions? No, that is not possible because with this fast faced society or fast faced living style of people, there will be new questions coming inside the court hall and in such case, if there are no laws available or no customs available, judges have to use their wisdom and make decisions and the same wisdom will be used for future cases also and whatever judgment they have made, the same need to be followed by lower courts also, which are called precedents or judiciary law or judgment laws or case laws. Now, the realistic school of jurisprudence believes greatly in this theory and the major jurists from that school are Frank and Holmes. Now, you need to remember two important theories. They are declarative theory and constitutive theory. Declarative theory says there is nothing called judgment laws and this theory is supported by Isher, Scruton, Allen and Blackstone whereas constitutive theory says there is judgment laws and precedent are the major source of law and this is supported by Salman as one of the major jurists. This slide is the heart of this entire presentation where I am discussing the types of judicial precedents. There are three major categories I have made authoritative and persuasive absolute and conditional, declaratory and original. Let us try understand them one by one. Authoritative are those precedents which should be followed by the court whereas persuasive the judges have options. The absolute precedents are those which needs to be or must be followed by the court whereas conditional can be referred by case to case. Declaratory precedents are those precedents which are settled in court and need to be followed whereas original precedents are the new precedents coming inside the court. These are the major types of precedents you need to remember. Please take the screenshot and read through for more information. Before concluding the session, let us try understand precedent as a source of law when it comes to Indian context. We need to have two different timelines, pre-independent India and post-independent India. Pre-independent India, the highest court in India was federal court and we had a law by name the Government of India Act 1919. Under section 212, it was said that whatever precedent laid down by federal court, the same need to be followed by all the other lower courts of India. That way, the precedent was given high importance during those days also. Now, after independence with the constitution, we also got Supreme Court and whatever judgment is given by Supreme Court as a precedent to be followed by Supreme Court itself and all the other courts of India. However, Supreme Court can change the judgment in its future cases. That is possible. And when it comes to high court, set precedents, it needs to be followed by all the other lower courts of that particular states and other states may refer or may not refer. That is possible. This is when it comes to Indian context and to understand the precedent as a source of law, you can study the basic structure doctrine of my video which is available under constitution law uh, playlist uh, that gives a lot of example on precedent and here I have referred uh, Union of India versus KS Subramaniam case. Please read through and with that I am concluding this presentation. My job is completed. Now it's your turn. Please subscribe my channel. Please like, share and comment my videos. For a person who is teaching on YouTube, it is not just about me. For all those people who are teaching on YouTube, the biggest motivation comes from you guys. When you comment on our video, we seriously enjoy it. I don't know about others 100% but for me, that is the biggest motivation. Thank you so much for your beautiful comments and all the very best for your exams. And Thank you so much for watching me.